Good evening and welcome to The Gathering Place. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at the book of Ephesians, uh, specifically in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And this familiar verse is dealing with God's grace in the matter of, of salvation. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Before we look at the meaning of the individual verse or two, it is important to get a feel for the context. So let's dive in and take a look at how this verse is set up. Ephesians was a letter written by Paul to the Christians in the city of Ephesus, which, is, which had a significant population of Gentile believers. And for those who don't know what a Gentile is, a Gentile is simply a person who is not a Jew. Paul sends, spends chapter one in Ephesians telling them of the incredible blessings they have in Christ. He tells them how they have been chosen and sealed with the Holy Spirit. He also prays that they will fully understand all the spiritual blessings they have in Christ. In chapter 2, he contrasts the believer's current position in Christ with their condition outside of Christ. They had been dead to their sins, and in Christ they have been reconciled to God. And that Jewish and Gentile believers have been reconciled to one another. In chapter 3, he elaborates on God's plan to include the Gentiles and Jews together in Christ. This unity is something that most people did not expect. Paul then thanks God for all the Ephesian believers, whether Jew or Gentile. And in Ephesians 4, in Ephesians 4, 1, Paul encourages believers in Ephesus to live up to their position in Christ. As a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. This statement is for all of us in Christ. Chapters 4 through 6 contain some of the most practical guidelines for us as Christians. Importantly, people do not obey these guidelines. People do not obey these guidelines in order to become Christians or to become acceptable to God. Rather, they follow these guidelines as a natural part of living out their position in Christ. And this brings us back to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. The popular notion is that God accepts good people and rejects bad people. Most people, whether Christianized countries or other different religions, most people operate under that idea that God accepts or rejects people based on some level of goodness or religious performance. The whole book of Ephesians rejects that premise. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 specifically refutes it. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a free gift of God, not by works so that no one would boast. Ephesians 2 and 7 says that God has given incredible blessings to those who are in Christ in order that they in the coming ages might show the riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. In other words, God has chosen to save sinners, not based on their goodness, but on his kindness. Don't miss that. On his kindness. He does, he does this to demonstrate his grace. That is to say, his undeserved favor. By definition, grace is a blessing that is undeserved and unwarranted. Grace is a gift freely given based on the kind intentions of the giver. To a recipient has, excuse me, to a recipient who has no claim of it. What God has done for us as believers in Christ is going to bring him glory. And Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 further explains how he gets all the glory. First, it is by grace you have been saved. If we are saved by grace, this means that it is not because we are good or deserving. Rather, it is because God is good and gracious. Second, we are saved through faith. In order to be saved, there is a necessary human response to God's grace. The response is not trying to be good enough to be saved. The response is simply trusting, having faith in God to save on the basis of Christ's goodness alone. Furthermore, we must understand that faith is not a good work on itself that God rewards. Faith is simply casting our unworthy selves on the mercy of a kind, forgiving, and gracious God. 
So what comes after Ephesians 2, 8, 9 is Ephesians 2, 10. Not only sequential, but also conceptually. We are not saved by doing good works, but we are saved for the purpose of doing good works. Ephesians 2, 10 states, for God, we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared us in advance to do. So God saves us and expects us to do something with that. We, out of consideration for what he's done for us, we need to be um, light and salt in this earth. Good works are a vital part of the Christian life because doing good is one of the reasons God saves us. He has things for us to do, but the sequence is all important. Good works are not the cause of salvation, but the purpose of it. God saves us so that we can go into the world doing good works in his name, and this brings him all the glory, and that's what he desires. Thanks be to God. So if you're sitting on your couch tonight and you're saved, the question is, what are you doing with it? Don't just lie on the couch. Do something. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful for your word. And uh, Lord, grace is just unbelievable. Uh, we can't even fathom uh, the undeserved grace that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for how you work in our lives. We pray for each one of us as believers, uh, Lord, that uh, we could be motivated and spurred into good works, Lord, that uh, if we see an opportunity, Lord, that we would not uh, be a passerby or, um, Lord, we just want to give you the glory and the credit to everything that we do and say in this world. And Lord, if we aren't, let us convict, convict us of that, Lord. We just pray for that tonight. Lord, we love you and thank you. And we ask these things in Christ's holy name. Amen.